Adequate notice of the meeting to be held by the Township of Ocean Board of Education on Tuesday, August 28, 2018, at 8 p.m. has been provided in accordance with the requirements of Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Notice of the meeting was posted on the bulletin board in the lobby of the Administration Building, 163 Monmouth Road, Oakhurst, New Jersey, all Ocean Township District Schools and Transportation, and the School District's website on January 3rd, 2018. Notice of the meeting was transmitted to the Asbury Park Press on January 3rd, 2018 and to the Coaster newspaper on January 3rd, 2018. Notice of the meeting was filed with the Municipal Clerk, Township of Ocean, and Municipal Clerk, Village of Lock Arbor on January 3rd. Mr. General, would you kindly call the roll, please? Mr. Clayton. Mr. Dietrich. And Mrs. Fuller. Here. Mr. Hyde. Here. Dr. Marshall. Here. Mrs. McGovern. Here. Mr. Parlamas. Here. Mr. Stuckey. Here. And Mr. Palutis. Here. Okay, we have two members absent, seven members present. We have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. General. We have no student representation tonight, so we'll jump right into Dr. Savakowitz and the superintendent's report. Thank you very much, Mr. Pruitt. Just one quick item. I just wanted to uh, point out and thank uh, the community of uh, Cedar Village at, uh, at Ocean, a active 55 and older community, uh, for their donation each year. As you as you know, they have a stuff the bus campaign. Uh, where they uh, collect uh, materials for uh, backpacks to give to students in our community who are of need. And this year they donate, donated 57 backpacks and more than 14 boxes of supplies to be used uh, by our kids in grades K through five. And what we do, of course, is we look at um, the number of uh, bags and supplies we get in and we distribute those equitably across the schools based on population. Um, and, and that always works out very well. And the administrative team uh, uses their discretion working with the counselors to determine you know, students who, who uh, look, uh, appear to be in need. So the supplies included binders and notebooks and uh, composition pads, crayons, pencils, markers, et cetera. So um, the generosity of the folks at Cedar Village is, is very much appreciated and of course helps to lift uh, the burden that many families feel. Uh, as it relates to the ever-growing uh, bill of, of school supplies, so we, we truly appreciate it. Uh, we are also working, and then I'll have more information on this next week, we are also working with another organization, uh, I think St. George Church, I think, uh, in the community. Uh, we spoke to them today, and, and they're also looking to donate perhaps up to 50 backpacks. So uh, well, we're going to have a lot of great supplies for our kids as we enter the, the school year. And um, just uh, as we start that, we um, if you didn't already know, next week we start school. So it was summer. Uh, it still is summer. Uh, but then again, it looks like it's going to rain a lot this weekend. So I don't know how much uh, beach time we'll have uh, to, to, to end the, the summer. But hopefully it was a healthy and enjoyable summer, a restful one for everyone. But we look forward to our teachers uh, returning next Tuesday. Uh, for Tuesday and Wednesday, and of course, all of our students on, on Thursday next week. For, this, for the start of, can you believe it, the 18-19 school year. So, that's it. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Svenkowitz. All right, at this time, uh, do we have any, oh, I'm sorry, let me remind public comment. The following are a series of motions to be read by the committee chairpersons. All motions have been discussed at a recent public work session. Some motions have been approved at the public work session, and the minutes from the approved items are on the back table. The motions are posted on the bulletin board, the district website, and the rear of the auditorium, along with the reference list and attachments. At this point in the meeting, we will now conduct the first two public comment sessions. The first session will be open for public comment on any agenda item only. The second session will be at the end of the meeting and can be on uh, any topic. At this time, anyone from the public like to ask any questions on the agenda? The attachments should be there too. No, no, no. I have an extra toss of this. This big crowd took you, to, you have to come early. You have to, to get yeah. stuff. <laughs> Is one member of the public going to have a uh, three? I'm sorry, you're just getting your... Give her a minute button. and see if she has a comment. It's another chance later. So. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, at this time, we're going to do our action items, uh, approval of minutes. Uh, 
Madam Vice President. Yes, I'd like to move to approve the meeting minutes in accordance with the Board of Education bylaws number 0168, according to board meeting minutes for um, August 7th, as well as work meeting and executive session minutes for May 15th. Do I have a second? Second. Ken, can you please call the roll, Mr. Chairman? Okay. Wait. Would you, oh yeah. Is there a question? Yep. Yeah, it says May 15th. Why does it say May, May on the bottom and then August 7th on the top? Yeah, uh, May would be a mistake. Okay. okay. So, so should we move you August 7th? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And just say, um, move yeah. to approve meeting minutes for okay. August 7th work meeting. Yes. Second. <laughs> okay, same motion and same second. No, you need Good. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Fuller. Yes. Uh, Mr. Howden? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGovern? Yes. Mr. Carlamas? Yes. Mr. Stoopy? Yes. And Mr. Fulis? Yes. Okay, and Mr. Harris. Thank you very much. Uh, approval of bills. Mrs. Fuller? Thank you, Mr. President. I apologize. Move for the approval of the following paid items as detailed below, which total four million eight hundred and twenty six thousand nine hundred and six dollars and nine cents. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. John. Okay. okay, for the bills list, Mrs. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Hatton. Yes. Dr. Marshall. Yes. Mr. McGovern? Yes. Mr. Marlamas? Yes. Mr. Stoopy? Yes. And Mr. Blutus? Yes. And the motion carries. Thank you. Policies and regulations, Mr. Janaro. Okay, uh, as you see, there are several policies uh, for the final. Uh, I had a first reading, second reading, and this is the final reading for this meeting. And just if there's any discussion, or a first and a second, and then any further discussion, uh, then uh, just need a roll call vote. Okay. I move we vote on the listed policy items. Second. Okay, Mrs. Fuller. Yes. Mr. Haddon. Yes. Dr. Marshall. Yes. Uh, Mr. McGovern. Yes. Mr. Perlamas. Yes. Mr. Stoopy. Yes. And Mr. Blues. Yes. Okay, the motion carries. Thank you. Financial management and resource services, Mrs. McGovern. Yes, I have nine items this evening. First, the following resolution certifies that the budget balances at the end of June and July were adequate to pay all remaining obligations for the 17-18 school year and that the account groupings required by the state have adequate balances. The board is also certifying that the independent reports of the treasurer and the business office are in agreement. Number two, the following motion is to transfer money from one account in the budget to another to provide the adequate balances referred to in the first motion. Number three, I move to approve the following resolution. Whereas the Township of Ocean District was issued state aid notices by the Department of Education in March 2018 in the amount of eight million seventy nine thousand seven hundred twenty dollars or approximately ten percent of the district general fund budget whereas the township of ocean board of education submitted a tentative budget to the department of education reflecting the march 2018 state aid numbers whereas after the department of education approved the tentative budget the township of ocean board of education conducted a public budget hearing and voted to approve the final budget on april 18th 2018 whereas the new jersey department of education on july 13th 2018 issued revised 2018-19 state aid notices totaling $7,472,792, reflecting a de decrease in $606,928, or 7.5% in state aid to the school district. Whereas at the July 24, 2018 Township of Ocean Board of Education meeting, a plan to reduce the final 2018-19 budget that had been in place for almost three months was approved. Whereas these reductions coupled with past budget cuts, state aid cuts, and increase in the school tax levy have left the Township of Ocean School District and the taxpayers of the Township of Ocean in fiscal direct distress. Therefore, be it resolved, the Township of Ocean Board of Education authorizes the District Superintendent of Schools and the School Business Administrator to complete and submit the emergency aid application to the Executive County Superintendent by August 31st, 2018 in the amount of $606,928. Number four, I move to approve the following security drills for the month of July, 2018. 
Number five, I move to approve the renewal of a three-year lease with the Chamber of Commerce to rent rooms at the current Township of Ocean Administration Building at a rate of $9,792 per year. This agreement is attached will end on August 31st, 2021. Number six, I move to approve the contract with Michael Lorry Transportation for the 18-19 school year for the total amount of $150,629.43, which represents a 1.5% increase over the 17-18 due to the addition of the stop arm cameras being installed in the Lorry buses for the following routes as listed. Number seven, I move to approve the two-year shared service agreement between the Township of Ocean Board of Education, Shore Regional Board of Education, and Monmouth Regional Board of Education on a cooperative sports program for ice hockey within the NJSIAA guidelines for the 2018-19 and the 2019-20 winter hockey seasons as per the attached memorandum. Number eight, I move to approve the increase of the substitute athletic trainer rate of pay from $125 per day to $30 per hour effective September 1st, 2018. And number nine, I move to approve the use of facilities according to the attached list dated August 28th, 2018 as listed. May I have a second? Second. Ken, can you call the roll? Okay, uh, Mrs. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Hyman? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Mrs. McGovern? Yes. Mr. Parlamas? Yes. Mr. Stubbe? Yes. And Mr. Plutus. Yes. And the motion is carried. Thank you. Instruction, Thank you. education, and student activities. Dr. Marshall. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have 14 items for consideration this evening. Item number one is a motion to approve the request of Shalom Lukowski, mathematics teacher at the Township of Ocean Intermediate School, to perform internship hours under the supervision of Kelly Rasmussen, supervisor, special education grades 6 through 12, in accordance with the attached memo. Item number two is a motion to approve an agreement in accordance with the attached memo dated July 31st between Johns Hopkins University Center for Talented Youth and the Township of Ocean School District. The program agreement would afford high school students who meet the CTY's eligibility criteria as outlined in the contract to take an online course in multivariable calculus. Item number three is a motion to approve the affiliation agreement between Kane University, Holocaust and Genocide Studies Program, and the Ocean Township School District in accordance with the attached copy. The agreement will cover a two-year period through June 30th, 2020. Item number four is a motion to approve in accordance with the attached memos dated July 30th, 2018, use of the following instruments for evaluation beginning with the 2018-19 school year. The district developed evaluation instrument based on the Charlotte Danielson model for professional staff. New Jersey Principal Evaluation for Professional Learning for Supervisors, Directors, Assistant Principals, and Principals. Item five is a motion to approve the attached memo dated August 24th regarding the staff professional development activities. Item number six is a motion to approve a cancellation to an out-of-district placement for the 2018 extended school year program in accordance with the attached memo dated August 17th. Item seven is a motion to approve district curriculum for the 2018-19 school year. Item number eight is a motion to approve student teachers for the 2018-19 school year in accordance with the attached memo dated August 24th. Item nine is a motion to approve student observers for the 2018-19 school year in accordance with the attached memo dated August 24th. Item 10 is a motion to approve out of district private tuition for the 2018-19 school year in accordance with the attached memo dated August 22nd. Item number 11 is a motion to approve out-of-district public tuition for the 2018-19 school year in accordance with the attached memo dated August 22nd. Item 12 is a motion to approve the placement of student number 77610 at MOESC Regional Alternative School for the 2018-19 school year. Item number 13 is a motion to, to approve the submission of the Statement of Assurance for the District's Professional Development Plan for the 2018-19 school year to the New Jersey Department of Education. Item number 14 is a motion to approve the submission of the Statement of Assurance for the District's Mentoring Plan for the 2018-19 school year to the New Jersey Department of Education. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you. Mr. Chandler? Okay, uh, Ms. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Hyde? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Uh, yes to all items except, uh, except numbers 8 and 9 which I recuse myself regarding Monmouth University. Okay, uh, Ms. McGovern? Yes. Ms. Parlamas? Yes. Mr. Stupi? Yes. And Mr. Palutis? Yes. Okay, the motion is carried. Thank you, Dr. Marshall. Personnel, Madam Vice President Parlamas. 
Yes, uh, Mr. President, I have 19 motions this evening. First, I'd like to move to approve that contracts be issued to Myra Dubkowski, math teacher at the high school, Bethany Danshiger, math teacher at the high school, Angelique Earl, special ed teacher at the high school, Diana Franswick, special ed teacher at the intermediate school, Jessica Kerber, elementary teacher, Township Ocean Intermediate School, Alexa Lewis, basic, basic skills part-time at the Wayside School, Christina Perino, special ed teacher part-time at the Intermediate School, Angela Rajivs, school psychologist at Wanamasa, Logan Singleton, elementary teacher at the Intermediate School, St Sarah Stiple, basic skills teacher part-time at Wayside, to fill a leave replacement on tenure track position, Rachel Burson, math teacher at the Intermediate School, Jane Hughes, instructional assistant at the high school. Second, I'd like to move to approve the suspension for a 10-day period of employee number 7685. Number three, I'd like to move to approve revisions to the following job description of 12-month secretary. Number four, I'd like to move to approve an unpaid family leave of absence as designated under NJFLA for Derek Walter, maintenance and grounds department electrician beginning August 24th through August 31st. Number five, I'd like to move to approve an unpaid family leave of absence for Ronald Williamson maintenance department beginning August 21st through September 28th. Number six, I'd like to move to approve an unpaid family leave of absence for Ramona Chambers, special ed teacher at the Intermediate School beginning September 28th through December 21st. Number seven, I'd like to move to approve the following resignations. John Bernacci, security monitor at the Intermediate School. Melissa Donahue, instructional assistant at the OTS School. Elise Schreier, uh, math teacher at the Intermediate School. And Alyssa Watts, special ed teacher part-time at Wanamassa. Number nine, I'd like to approve the following retirements. Robin Meyer, 10-month secretary at the high school, and Derek J. Walter, maintenance work electrician, maintenance and grounds department. Number nine, I'd like to move to approve that a revised contract be issued to Valerie Source, assistant principal at the Town of Ocean Intermediate School. Number 10, I'd like to move to approve uh, Barbara Brannigan as a volunteer cheerleading coach for the high school. Number 11, I'd like to move to approve the following employee transfer effective September 1st, 2018. Antoinetta Gerstein, 12 month secretary at the high school, to 12 month secretary at the office, to the office of the assistant superintendent. Number 12, I'd like to move to approve substitute teachers as listed. Number 13, I'd like to move to approve the following as playground aides and playground aid substitutes as listed. Number 14, I'd like to move to approve the following as substitute bus drivers and substitute transportation aides as listed. Number 15, I'd like to move to approve the following class size reduction teachers for the upcoming school year, three hours per day, $30 per hour as listed. Number 16, I'd like to move to approve additional child study team 2018 summer employment as listed. Number 17, I'd like to move to approve Robert Zupko as the art club advisor at the high school. Number 18, move to approve for the 2018-19 school year. Thomas McDonough as a substitute security monitor, pending completion of paperwork and criminal history background check. And number 19, I'd like to move to approve John Bosman Sr. as director of facilities, acting for the period of September 1st through April 30th, 2019. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. <clears throat> Janowin, can you please call the roll? Mrs. Fuller. Yes. Uh, Mr. Adams? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGovern? Yes. Mr. Parlamas? Yes. Mr. Stupi? Yes. And Mr. Pulitz? Yes. Okay, the motion is carried. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Public Relations, Mr. Haddon. Thank you, Mr. President. Two items. Uh, one, move to approve the 2018-19 sponsorship program participants in accordance with board policy number 9720 as listed. And program raised approximately $20,500 for the school year and move to approve the 2018-19 bus sponsorship program participants in accordance with board policy 6164. Uh, this program will raise approximately 6300 for those proceeds for the school year. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, uh, Ms. Fuller? Yes. Mr. Haddon? Yes. Dr. Marshall? Yes. Mr. McGovern? Yes. Mr. Parlamas? Yes. Mr. Stupi? Yes. 
Uh, Mr. Pelutis. Yes. Uh, motion's carried. Thank you, Mr. Haddon. Technology Committee, Mr. Stupe. I sadly have nothing to report tonight. Thank you, Mr. Stupe. At this time, is there any old business before the board? At this time, is there any new business before the board? I do have one item for new business. Uh, I know we're going to block scheduling. I heard next week for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I got a great email in my parent email account, and I watched an excellent red and white video uh, geared towards the students. Uh, I thought that was great on demand access of that instead of getting a stack of uh, paper that would only utterly confuse us parents. But <laughs> my daughter watched the video, understood it great, and one day red, one day white. So I'll let you know how that goes next one, <laughs> a couple Wednesdays from now. So, Mr. Amato, I'm just pointing at you and your staff over there, so really appreciate that. That was well done and, you know, great stuff. So, fingers crossed on that. Thank you. That's all I have. And I, not just Franklin, it's the head of our district for that, too. So, that's all I have for new business. It's all them. It's all them. <laughs> well done. Well done. From the parent side. So, at this time, no other new business news or any public comments on any items, agenda or otherwise. Come on up. Two comments. Um, Just state your name and address, please, for the record. Alto, 
to make that personal connection first with the parents because like I said we really don't know what's going on with a lot of the classes from not having a conference and from not seeing the work that we once you know in the old days you got a folder we don't get that anymore you know at least the older kids and and for the other kids like my daughter who works so hard to to do well to not acknowledge that with a simple little comment, I, I just, I think it's wrong. So if you guys, like when you're having your teacher development and stuff, like I, it, we see on Twitter, you know, oh, this teacher is Google, you know, 17 certified. We don't really care about that. <laughs> but if you put some comments on the report card and like, let me know that you care about my kid or, you know, like that, that's what we care about. So, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comments at this time? Yes. I'm Paul Edelson, 219 Pinecrest Road, Douglas. I have a question on the 606,000 reduction. And it, there's a, I think I'm sending something to the state, or I guess to the county. Uh, what, when we got the reduction, what was the reasoning? Just take it? What was the reason? We, well, according to the, you know, can't please, but according to the, according to the state, uh, their new funding formula, we are considered an overfunded school district, um, and as such, that basically they're saying we, we get to, we've been getting too much in, in, in state aid, and and, and uh, needed to be reduced accordingly, and, and and actually that was not the full reduction in the new uh, funding formula that uh, and the law that was passed uh, through the legislature as part of the budget. Um, uh, the adoption of the, bu the state budget for you know fiscal year um, will we'll look to lose about the same amount over the next five years. Uh, so it's going to be a con consistent reduction. You know, kind of doing that. So what that means when they say overfunded is that they look at our relative wealth and the rateables of the community and say that the taxpayers can afford to pay X amount of dollars, and so that uh, and so that they don't need to supply as much state aid because they're not paying their fair share. The community's not paying their fair share. Now, so we buy that? No, no we, we, think we it's disagree ridiculous. with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> and how, how are we defending it? Well, have it, we talked to our state senators, our well, local assemblymen? They all voted Absolutely. yes on yes. that Multiple we, times. We've actually had meetings with yes. them they before They voted for it, yeah. yeah. But and I, and we, I can share with you a letter also, Dr. Stavankowitz, we're, we're meeting with other uh, underfunded districts to try to come together and to fight this exactly what, what you're saying. So I can share with you a, a letter that's been sent to the uh, commissioner and we're trying other avenues to, to work on this because the future is, is, is really bleak mm -hmm. as far as losing money each year and, and you know you can withstand a little bit but it starts to add up and we're going to get to a bad place quickly uh, and, and we're Actually, you know, compared to some Tom Rivers and the Bricks, were we're not nearly as bad as they are, but we're all joining together to try to to fight this because we we believe their calculations of overfunded are, are not correct. That that it's. So we've looked at that and, and we have uh, an argument as to how their calculations. Well, it, not just specifically to Ocean Township, but the whole formula is flawed uh, in and of itself. So that's part of the the argument. Uh, that it's outdated and flawed on how they uh, on how they calculate the wealth uh, okay, measure. <laughs> we will and, uh, and and we will be reaching out to the community more as we go through this to ask for some help as far as contacting legislators and things of that nature. Some of the other communities have done that, and and we're working towards that point too. So we'll we'll be in touch. Or if you could all just quit your jobs, our level of wealth would go down and get more in. I, I contacted my two reps about mm -hmm. that. It's completely outrageous. And the response I got was so patronizing. I was so insulted. It was like, we believe, don't worry, we believe in higher funding. Even though I just told you, you took away all of this money. It was kind of like a, a patent response. You mean you got a political answer? Yeah. No, but it was, but it was like really yeah, next time you call, use smaller words. They're not very bright. Thank you. Okay. So. Yes. My name is Phil Daly from Glenview Drive in Ocean Township. Uh, the question I have is enrollment. Uh, 
lost a thousand students over the past 17 years. You still operate the same number of buildings, and it looks like very little has been done to, control, to cut expenses. So I, I agree with the, uh, the whole notion of the fairness of state funding and measuring the wealth of the community. But if you've lost a thousand students, some action should have been taken. And I'll give you two, two suggestions. You probably can close two schools and have adequate capacity to run the district on the three remaining schools. And I would guess that would save at least $2 million a year per school close. The second thing is our uh, cost per student is approaching $24,000 a student. I looked at the state records and we have, in comparison, Edison, New Jersey is at 15,000. So that's a huge disparity. And the biggest thing that I see that's different between Ocean Township and Edison is they have 7.5 students per employee and we're down to 4.8. So we, we employ approximately 35% more help. So the thing that I would suggest is that we seriously consider a high increase. No one needs to get laid off, but we should, we should downsize the district to the reality of the fact that we have a thousand fewer students to educate. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Sure. W would the, the two schools that you're suggesting would uh, would just curious would your suggestion One be? And, and convert the, and move those students into Wayside and the intermediate. You've got tremendous capacity in the intermediate school, according to uh, what you posted on the website. If you close down two buildings, you'd, you'd be operating uh, at about 80 percent, 86 percent capacity. Okay, and we agree that we would move fourth grade over to the intermediate school. Yeah, you, you would jiggle things around, <laughs> but you don't need five. You don't need five buildings when you no longer have 4,500 kids to educate. You got 3,400. Okay. Thank you. Any other public comment at this time? Just uh, one last thing in terms of uh, the reason I came here was taxes. Sure. My school taxes have gone up 15% in the last two years. And all my neighbors have experienced the same thing. So I think the uh, something needs to be done to control expenses. Because I guess next year, uh, assuming the state rejects all the pleas, you're looking at another 8% increase in school taxes. Correct or, or am I wrong? No, well, it's not 8%. Yeah, it's 8%. Yeah. It's 8%. You know, it's There's the biggest thing we lost was Lock Arbor. You know, it's a, a large rateable that was part of the district since Ocean Township decided to actually have a high right. school and make its own district and part ways with Asbury Park. But that was $2 million we lost right there. We're still in litigation with that. This year, when we build our budget, starting about the you know, new calendar year, early February, we start building our budget. We wait for the governor's office to tell us, here's what your state aid is going to be. Unfortunately, since Governor Christie's been there, we lost, we were in the 10 and $11 million. We're down to $7 million. This year we got a little bump, $8 million. We were told they were going to be here. Fast forward three months, we approved the budget. We went through multiple cuts. We looked through attrition. We tried to right size the district multiple times. And as you're saying, just move students around. It's kind of difficult because different grade levels, there are state requirements on bathroom use and everything along those lines. And plus, we just had a major referendum. Just invested invested $29 million into the infrastructure to right size the district. So we're trying to constantly balance that. We're all taxpayers here at this table. We're all residents of Ocean Township. We feel the pain and we see everything on it. And we try to right size the district for our students. We want a great school system, which we have. As you look around this building, we're not 
spending money for chandeliers in our administration building and things like that, we do it for our students and our end users. And we we feel it. We feel it monthly and we feel it on our tax bill too. But there's a lot of other things besides attrition and students that we have to look at. Well, so I hope that open, answers How that. many open positions do you have per year? Open positions mean for teachers? New positions. For yeah. teachers or for students? No, for uh, staff. Teachers and staff. Well, that that to varies. Like, when you, like, you yeah, yeah, go ahead. When you say open, I'm sorry, sir. When you when you say open, do you mean open in turn or new positions? Do you new mean positions. new that were not existing prior or okay? Um, usually, uh, that any any time we're looking at new positions, it's usually based on our special education population, which is even though our overall population is decreasing, you're absolutely correct. Our special education population, as a percentage within that overall population, is growing. And there are many state mandates which require that if we go over a certain number of special education students in a particular area, then we have to add another section, we have to add another, you know, we may need to add another teacher based on the numbers. So we have decreased our general education staff over the last so many years, but the problem is we've increased our special education staff to match and be compliant with state law. Um, and, and that has been uh, we're a desirable district for families with students with special needs. We do a very good job in, 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 um, in, in educating students with special needs, and so people come to our community, uh, and that's a wonderful thing, but those costs can be uh, extraordinary. Um, you know, we have millions of dollars in out-of-district tuition, which has increased over the years for special needs students who, unfortunately, were not able to uh, educate in the district, so we have to send them to out-of-district schools. That cost is millions of dollars every year. Um, so, it, 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 the, you know, the numbers tell a story, but they don't necessarily tell the entire story because there's a lot of nuances to, you know, the positions that you speak. You know, last year, um, from our intermediate school, for example, we cut an entire team of, of teachers. It was positions, so we were able to, to move people to different places that were open uh, around the district. But for the most part, we, we you know cut about eight, eight teaching positions. There were three teaching positions this year that we did not uh, fill as a result of the budget cuts. So we, we have absolutely reduced our staff overall, but there, are, there have been some areas um, that we've had to actually increase the staff because of, and it's primarily been special education. Special education and probably bilingual education or our ELL population increases over the last But in total, the staff is much higher than it was in, let's say, the year 2000. I don't know that's accurate. I mean, I mean the numbers it, are it probably is a little, it probably, yes, it, it would be higher, higher net, net higher. higher. Well, part of it was, once again, it was our instructional aids right, that we've added for special aids. education is probably quadrupled in the last 15 years. Um, and and our and our we, we are, you know the special ed teaching staff has, has increased over that time as well. But the general education teaching staff and, and overall have, has come down. Administration is down. General ed uh, general education down. So uh, many of them are down, but net special the increase education. Is up. And we, just when I entered the district about five years ago, we had I want to say we had somewhere around forty to fifty instructional assistants. We now have I think over eighty. Yeah, close to 100. Yeah. Or, or close yeah. to 100. Um, you know, it's almost doubled just in, in five years. And that's, once again, due to uh, IEPs and individual education plans written for students uh, based on their, their educational needs. A lot of students with one-on-one -on -one aids. Um, it's, very, it, it, it's needed for the students, but it's very costly. And a, a town like Edison doesn't have that? Oh, absolutely. They would have that it as would, well. So, the, the, you know, my only point was Edison is running at a much lower staffing level than we are here. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, I'd have to look at the. I'd have to look at their statistics. I don't know. Obviously, you, you, you seem to be more well versed in that. Oh, well, it's on the state website. Yeah, it, it's uh, easy to look up. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, I just haven't, I haven't done that. But um, um, yeah, I mean, I can't speak to that. Uh, you know, because I don't know specifically the nuances of Edison. I mean, it's certainly they're going to have special education students, no doubt about it. Um, and to me, the number you, you uh, listed for uh, cost per pupil seems a little bit high, but, but uh, it depends on which depends on which category which, you look at. It, yeah, right? measurement you're looking yeah. at, they're different. Well, I just thought the total expenditures divided by students. Okay. Right. 
Okay, there's other, because there's non-public costs, there are other costs in there that aren't related, so that's why when you look up the state. You had a net number of close to $82 million. So you divide $82 million by your student headcount, and that's your cost per student. And you did the same for them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there, there are other things in it, and that's why the, the Department of Education, when they have their cost per pupil, they take out certain things that really the district goes through our budget that really don't relate to like non-public costs. Uh, so they're, and that's why they do more of a apples to apples comparison. So you could take a look at that. But as, as far as the 8% uh, budget increase, that's, that's not possible. The, uh, the state keeps us to a 2% cap. Now there are some waivers in where we can increase that, uh, and that's a tax levy cap. So even though we may lose state aid, we would have to make adjustments to our budget. We could only raise the taxes to, to possibly 3%, depending on what waivers we uh, qualify for but we could never increase the taxes 8% to, uh, in the tax levy. Well, every one of my neighbors got an 8% increase. Well, but that, that, that you got to remember neighbors. From the, re, from the reassessment the that took place? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's done. But, so that's not, yeah. Right. It's done under the guise of a reassessment. And that's, well, that's what it was. it didn't have to go through the, the uh, a voter referendum. But it's it's still an eight percent tax increase, no matter how you slice it. Oh, well, that's not right, you're paying more because your house is worth more. Raising your your taxes by eight percent, though. My your, school taxes went up by eight percent. Your house that's is worth based more. Evaluation of your house. We, right. we someone else has made some tax levy. Someone else has gone down. Tax levy by eight percent. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. You know, I'm in a similar boat. Believe me, I, I live in town. I, I I understand it. You know, I've, I've seen increases because of the Lock Harbor and. Uh, uh, loss and, and also a reassessment. My, you know, uh, you want to say it's a good thing. My house was reassessed for about sixty thousand dollars more in the last year. Yeah. Uh, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But but certainly I felt that not pain as well. Retired. Yeah. No. Absolutely. But that six hundred seven thousand dollars we lost, we didn't. We cut it from the budget. We didn't pass it on. Yeah, it wasn't passed along. It wasn't passed along. We couldn't pass it on. So we had to reopen the books and make some tough calls mm -hmm. from the administration's requirements or recommendations and we cut a number of teachers and other things throughout the budget that we had approved three months before so you know unfortunately when, when you have large cuts you know s s staffing is, is is usually one of your larger expenditures between, right? yeah between salary and benefits so unfortunately when you have larger amount cuts six seven hundred thousand dollars a million dollars one of the only ways that you can get to that number is is, is unfortunately through through positions so we have absolutely made cuts in, in, in positions in the last several years, without question. Um, and, and there's probably more to come. That, that we can say is, is, a, is a pretty, uh, pretty good certainty as uh, if we continue to see these, these reductions in state aid of you know, six or seven hundred thousand dollars. And we're doing other things too. We had to begin charging tuition for our preschool. And tuition policy and, and, and a number of things. You know, also too, to take into consideration, I don't, I'm not sure what Edison's just to use them as the example that you put out, but you know our, our, our health insurance increases for our staff have gone up significantly in the last you know number of years. That health, those health costs have been extravagant. Uh, we're in the state health benefit plan. I, I, I don't know what kind of plan you know Edison has, but they've been able to negotiate with their associations in terms of cheaper costs. There's there's all kinds of things, but these are all efforts that the board has has entered into to to try to. Uh, keep costs down, and to you know, as you say, we all we all live here, so we, we feel the same, you know, that, that that same pain in terms of the increases. So we we do work hard to, to try to keep the costs down. But there are some things that have you know, really gone beyond, um, you know, that the that rate of growth has gone beyond um, what what it's very difficult for us to afford. You know, healthcare alone, 13 percent increases, you know, representing over a billion dollars in you know increase to our budget. Uh, the only way we can get to a 2% cap is to reduce costs in other areas, and that does include staffing. Any other public comment at this time? We have a motion to adjourn. Motion. I have a second. Second. Do you want to get more letter? Oh, my name backwards. Yeah. Well, you knew who you were. <laughs> They didn't. How you doing?